I'm Pastor George Borkard, and this is another Higher Things Video Short. Woke Wednesday takes on Trigger. That's the subject of today's Higher Things Video Short. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, get the app, donate. If you love what we're doing in Higher Things, pass the faith to the next generation. Like our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, ring the bell for notifications. Did you hear a bell? Nice catch, buddy. Get the app. There's a Higher Things app in your app store. Any app store. Higher Things Lutheran. Search it today. And donate. Your tax-deductible gift to Higher Things keeps us, a youth organization, all about the faith. And passing that faith of Jesus on to others keeps us a rolling. And we need your gifts in these dark times. Woke Wednesday means we have Erica Jacoby. She is the face that runs the place in Higher Things, former school teacher and now executive director of Higher Things. Erica, the Lord be with you. And also with you. So, um, school teacher, education system, public school. Uh, yeah, public what school is correct. triggered? What mm -hmm. does it mean? And what is a trigger warning? Those are great questions, uh, and they are a couple of words that are floating around quite a bit with kids these days, and adults as well, and the adults who work with them. Um, so triggers are actually anything that reminds someone of a previous trauma. So if you're having a conversation with somebody and they say, oh, I'm triggered, that they're telling you that, that you're reminding them of some sort of um, past trauma that happened to them. And I also think for the sake of accuracy that it uh, probably bears defining the word trauma as well. Uh, a trauma is an emotional response to a, a bad event, a terrible event that happened to someone, like maybe an accident, um, an act of violence, or perhaps even natu natu natural disaster. Um, and then, of course, there are a lot of emotions that come immediately after the event, like shock and denial. There can be longer-term reactions, which include unpredictable emotions, flashbacks, that can strain relationships um, and even physical symptoms can uh, pop up like headaches and nausea. So um, this idea of trauma or maybe you've even heard of post-traumatic stress, um, that's referring to after the effect of having some of these physical symptoms um, that you experience after the fact is post-traumatic stress. Um, and it's become um, such a concern that even at my high school and I know at other in other um, public school settings, they're asking teachers to learn trauma-informed instructional practices. Um, and the reason that they're doing that is that uh, the CDC recently in 2019 said that trauma is possibly the largest public health issue facing our children today. Now, of course, that was prior to uh, COVID-19. Um, but they think that up to two-thirds of U.S. children have experienced at least one type of serious childhood trauma such as abuse, neglect, um, natural disaster, as I mentioned, or maybe even experiencing or witness, witnessing some sort of violence. Um, and so that can really affect um, a child's learning. Um, and we know that neurobiologically speaking, kids can't um, optimize their learning if they don't feel safe in their environment. And so thus they've sort of... Um, increased our awareness of how to reach kids who possibly have suffered childhood trauma. Um, and then one of the other things that teachers do um, to define your other term that you asked me to, to, to uh, define is that trigger warning. Um, a trigger warning is simply a notice to students so that, that um, they are about to see something challenging um, to them, um, uh, emotionally speaking, in a course. Um, and we kind of want to let them know that um, certain images uh, in the material might be related to racism, sexual violence, or other trauma-related experiences that they have so that they can take the time to prepare mentally and physically before they see it or perhaps to even remove themselves from, from the setting. Um, and so those are the definitions that we're working with. Um, and probably a little bit of the history of the background of why that has come up um, and why it's been used so regularly. Um, and I know um, we have you here to kind of help us um, see this from a Christian worldview, from a Christian's perspective. Um, and my question for you, Pastor Borkhart, is um, what does the scripture say about how, how God views the fragile, um, how, how God views fragile people um, and 
who are maybe hurt by other people. Well, um, now it's almost like you weren't ready for that question. <laughs> well, first off, I have one more question before I answer your question. Oh, please, please. Right, okay. Which is, which is, um, The scriptures speak in terms of, uh, like Romans 5, um, we glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance produces character, character produces hope. And so, like, being challenged, being, um, uh, being uh, suffering refines our faith. It's, it's actually, um, suffering is actually a good thing in the Christian faith. Engaging your fears is a good thing in the Christian faith. Um, is there any sort of uh, sort of studies going on right now in the mm -hmm. world to sort of to sort of recognize? That? I mean, I know we've got Kelly Clarkson um, that what who, doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Sing right, <laughs> stand a little taller. Doesn't mean I'm lonely when I'm alone. <laughs> what doesn't kill you actually, makes a fighter. Actually, Footsteps actually, even lighter. Come up with that. That's you it's Nietzsche. Me that means stop. That means stop. Um, you're triggering me. No, I'm kidding. Um, actually, Kelly Clarkson uh, is not the originator of that phrase. A, a 19th century German philosopher by the name of Friedrich Nietzsche is. Um, and that, of course, is conventional wisdom that teaches us that um, humans actually thrive a little bit with conflict and adversity, right? Uh, in fact, researchers find that early career failure actually promotes future professional success. So we do know that, um, we do know that, you know, having an easy life doesn't exactly uh, produce a well-rounded individual. Um, but some of the things that we're talking about here, actual trauma can be things that are really hurtful, both emotionally and physically long-term to people. And the question here, I know, Pastor Burkhart, you've talked a lot about gift and how things that on the surface or from the worldview would be maybe something quite terrible, like the death of a loved one or some sort of physical harm, um, being mugged, being assaulted. Um, how can we say to someone with the eyes of faith that that actually is a gift? Um, that's a tough. That's a that's a tough pill to swallow. Maybe you can help us kind of talk through that. Well, the only way that we understand that is through the way of faith. Um, and what I mean by that is, is I'm going to keep you on the split screen. So you have to, uh, endure this. Um, uh, <laughs> faith believes that all that the Lord puts in our way, it doesn't happen apart from the suffering and death of Jesus. And that, and that's the Romans thing that was, was speaking there. Uh, Paul is not saying, you know, pull your bootstraps off and just, just suck it up kiddo and endure it. What he's saying is that there's a gift in it for you as the Lord refines through suffering, through challenges, um, your faith so that there's less you and more Jesus. And so in a Christian perspective, which was your question, um, you know, we, we want to say, okay, look, I need to love my neighbor and I need to make sure that I care for my neighbor's needs and I don't unduly, um, upset my neighbor. But there's also, um, a way in which if we, if we are not challenging our children, if we are not pushing them to look, if the first time we fell off a bike, we were done with the bike, no one would ever ride a yeah. bike. And yeah. so, so we have to figure out a way, um, to love people and to respect them where they are and also challenge them to move forward. I think that rests in parents and teachers and pastors and uh, what I mean by the authorities in people's lives who have the ability to say, you're going to help me with this because we have another, we have yeah. 45 seconds to go before 10 minutes. They, yeah. they have the ability to say, look, that's a traumatic experience, but you can grow from this. You can turn yeah. this traumatic experience into something. Failure is a, is a great teacher. And I can find that in Latin. Um, it's been, it's been, uh, Nietzsche didn't come up with this, with half the stuff that he did. It's no. nothing news under the yeah. sun. So I yeah. learned from failure. Um, uh, what is Batman? Oh, uh, what does Alfred tell uh, Bruce Wayne? What do we do when we fall? We get back up again. What does falling teach us? Right. Teaches us how to get back up again. So a quick 30 seconds on, on, on what educators can do to help and teachers, 
Sunday school teachers and the like can do to teach children how to, how to learn yeah. from their mistakes? Well, I would simply say um, that the way you can, educators can help uh, the kids that they're working with is to not allow them to define themselves by uh, the bad things that happen to them and to teach them to define themselves in their baptism. That's where their identity comes from. They are not their mistakes. They are not the bad things that have happened to them um, from other people. In fact, reinforcing that message um, really can cause them to be fragile people um, and have the opposite effect of, of what we desire. And so to really identify with your baptism that in Jesus, you are good, you are right with God, and that's for all time. Erica Jacoby is the executive director of Higher Things. She is also uh, a former uh, public school teacher, and um, she's helping us get through um, this woke, woke culture. Thank you. We're going to continue. <laughs> We're going to continue challenging our, our, our young people with the faith of Jesus that has been passed on to us so that they would learn that suffering produces endurance endurance produces character and character produces hope and hope in jesus never disappoints i'm pastor george barkhart and thor and this has been another higher things video short